I've been playing The Sims 4 for about two or three years now, and I've logged almost 5,000 hours of gameplay. I've played The Sims 4 on a channel before, and I realized I have a lot more fun playing The Sims together. But before I jump into playing Legacy Challenges, which I will, I want to start off with how I set my game up. The Sims 4 was pretty recently made free, so I want to give you some tips, tricks, and tutorials for getting started with modding your gameplay. The first thing I will disclaim is that your game will not look like my game. I use G-Shade and later on I'll tell you more about mods that are a bit more in depth but this video is for Sims 4 beginners. Maybe you just downloaded the game and I remember being in that situation realizing that there are things that I want in the game and having no idea how to go about and do it. There are plenty of tutorials and I found those helpful but I want to have my own spin. For now we're going to stare at this screen for just a moment while I break down to you what Sims 4 mods are and then I'll walk you through several things like which mods I think that you should get as a beginner, where you can download mods, how to download mods, and what to do when your mods break. But let's start with why you would download a mod. The Sims 4 is a really fun and amazing game. I have a ton of fun playing with The Sims 4 but what you'll realize pretty quickly is that there are some things in the game that that really just don't work as you would like them to work or there is something missing or you wish there was more depth. An example by me wishing that you had more interactions. Say that your sim just got a promotion and you want to talk about it or your sim was having a baby and didn't have the option to do much beyond tell about pregnancy, general things like that. Even though my sim is overheating, um, even things like inserting cheats and not wanting to do that constantly or wanting to have cheats constantly on or wanting easier ways to manipulate and fine tune your game. That's why you would have a mod. And I'm going to tell you a couple of mods that I think that you should start out with, just depending on what you're looking for. But I would consider most of these pretty basic mods. So the first mod that I am going to recommend to you is UI Cheat. As I mentioned, sometimes sims do glitch or sometimes they're getting on your damn nerves. Say that your sim is actually actually super smelly and you don't want to deal with it. Maybe you're playing rags to riches or you're busy or you're doing something. You see how easily I am able to manipulate all of her needs, bring them up or bring them down as I would like. That's something that you are not naturally able to do in the game. That is through the help of UI extensions. I'll show you where to download that in the next portion of this video. In addition, say that the weather was really annoying. It's your Sims wedding day and it's actually freaking snowing. You can change the current weather with UI extensions just by right clicking on the little icon for the weather at the bottom. To slow it down, I'll do it again here. Boom, I actually want it to be hot winds. And then within a few hours, that weather will change to reflect that. The other thing that you can do that I find the most useful with UI extensions is changing money. I often play rags to riches. I want my sim to start out with zero simoleons. I can set it to that. And I want her to have all of her money back. I can set it to that. That also works if we're in build mode. Say that you are building a house and you've run out of funds you can just do your little right click and it will do that. You can also do it for bits and pieces, but keep in mind bits and pieces, I'm pretty sure it came with eco lifestyle and that's why I have that option. So I really enjoy UI extension just for the simple reason that it allows me to manipulate and control my game the way that I would like. UI extension also really works with uh, skill levels. Say I need my sim to get max charisma because I'm trying to accomplish something. I need her to complete her aspiration or one portion of her aspiration because the game glitched and it didn't recognize that that had actually already happened. And you're also able to do this with ages. So I'm telling the story and I want to add 15 more days to her lifespan. Zoe is now older. So that's why I encourage you to check out UI extension it also allows you to right click on traits and remove it. Say that my sim had a fear of something, I could just 
do that little right click and it would go away. The next mod I would recommend to you is MC Command Center and this is for kind of manipulation of your sims and your game. You can also do things like change your sims age, say you're having a birthday party and you're trying to age up another sim but you don't have a cake, you can just set their age, you can do this for any sim, they do not have to be in your household. You can still, you can kill your sim, you can teleport your sim. This also works for posing by the way but that is a separate video and there's a ton of things that you can do. The main thing I tend to do is MC pregnancy if I'm trying to get my sim pregnant right away and I just need that to happen or MC dresser if say she's overheating like she was earlier in the video I can just boom and change outfit. On my previous channel I did a video on MC command center so I'll have it linked in the description below so you can watch more of that but I encourage you to check that out and I'm going to place down a computer just so you can see how you're able to modify your entire game with MC command center. If you're in the game and you're clicking your sim or the mailbox you're modifying that situation but if you go to the computer mc command center essentially gives you access to the entirety of the game and how the game is running so you hate randomized townies you're actually able to change that and go into the populating settings import tray settings and your tray is all of the sims that you have saved to your library you could save this to 100 percent and that essentially would mean that um you've almost eliminated randomized townies and you have a game full of sims that you have created but mc command center lets you manipulate everything in the game from how you pay your bills to what the bills are whether or not you have child support how pregnancy works how relationship works what your sims are autonomously able to do if there's anything that you want to turn on or you want to turn off again i'm not going to go in depth with mc command center here i'll just link the tutorial to how mc command center works in the comments below but that is a mod that i recommend for beginners because it allows you to set up and manipulate your game to exactly what you want it to be and enable or disable or fine tune or change anything that you do and do not like. MC Command Sensor also allows you to set it up so that you can have your cheats always on so you never have to go in and do things like testing cheats true, enable cast out full edit mode, bb.move objects on, or you're trying to access the hidden catalog. MC Command Center, you can set that all up so that it is already running how you want it to run. There are a million more mods that I could recommend to you, but the one that I would recommend is the Relationship and Pregnancy Overhaul, and that is this mod menu right here, and that's just because it adds a lot of depth to your sims. Beyond just reproductive health and pregnancy, it also gives you the option to do things like adopt, which you can do in the game, but it's very superficial. This adoption is a little bit more in depth but also it gives you things like deciding to be celibate deciding to be faithful uh sending love letters it gives you a dating app which is really fun and you can see it on the phone it is a really fun time what it also allows you to do is if your sim was cheating on someone they would have the option to break up demand a separate temporation accuse of closeness with as opposed to now if your sim is getting cheated on they really don't have that much of a reaction they'll stop get a little bit of a negative interaction in a relationship and then not much will change this mod adds a lot of depth including giving your sims the ability to have feelings beyond happiness if they did end up being pregnant and they had a sentiment towards that so you can say wants children does not want children is neutral things like that so those are the core mods that i would recommend if you're an absolute beginner just looking to be able to have more control over your game and have a, a bit more depth. I will have videos later on giving you some more mod recommendations but for now those are the basic ones that I would recommend that you start with. Okay let's talk about how to download mods and where to find the three mods I spoke to you about. So with MC Command Center, you can find this straight on Deaderpool's website, and Deaderpool is the creator. The link is right here. It will also be in the description below, but you can always just Google Sims 4 MC Command Center, and it will take you to this page. And that should take you to your MCC downloads, which is the page that we are on now. This page is arranged from the oldest version of the mod to the newest. The ones at the very top are your most updated version of MC Command Center. These two at the bottom are for Legacy Edition. If you're playing the Legacy Edition of The Sims 4, which means that your computer does not have the parts that it needs to run The Sims 4, I believe it's something like the processor, you would need a newer computer. 
most players are not playing on Legacy Edition, but if you are, you will know because your Sims game will say Sims 4 Legacy Edition, and keep in mind that your game is then not compatible with most mods unless there is a Legacy Edition version of the mod, which is just an old version of the mod that the creator has up. But for everyone else, you're going to download the MC Command Center package. It's going to go straight into a zip, and you're going to download MC Woohoo. MC Woohoo is what allows you to do things like Risky Woohoo, and manipulate things related to pregnancy and woohooing in The Sims 4. So you're going to download both of those. Just click and it's going to download straight away unless your computer is blocking it, in which case you'll get a little notification that says blocked for your safety or it'll be a little button here that says uh, like accept or something like that. You can find UI extensions on Patreon. It is free. Just search Sims 4 UI extension. This mod has not been update it since August 30th of last year. It still works perfectly fine. There hasn't been any major breakage. It works perfectly fine, but know that UI extension has broken in the past before. The UI is just this section here. It is over here. It's their uh, skills or traits, like these little boxes here. And then if you have an event, there will be a menu here that pops up. That is your UI. All of these things are your UI. So if you're having any glitches with that, that probably means that the UI is outdated and you're going to have to wait for the update. And in that meantime, you'll remove that mod from your folder. I'll show you how to download it in a moment. Just like MC Command Center, you can go through and read. It's just giving you a tutorial. It's essentially right clicking and left clicking on whatever it is that you want to change and you will just download it's going to download straight into a zip and our biggest mod is the relationship and pregnancy overhaul mod because this changes so many aspects of your game this is the creator right here so all you're going to do with this mod is you are going to read this if you want to it's telling you what it is and what each folder is in case you don't want to have certain aspects of the game. Say that you really don't want to have miscarriages and pregnancy loss in your game. You can remove that folder from the mods, but this folder here is the entire collection. So you're going to boop and download that. Those downloads are now in your downloads folder or wherever you have your downloads set up to go. What I like to do, obviously I'm on Windows. If you're on Mac, it's a similar thing. It's gonna look different still be in your downloads folder and you're going to go to your mods folder now the mods folder traditionally exists in your documents folder then you'll have ea then you'll have the sims 4 and then you will have mods my mods folder is full but yours will be blank it will only have this resource document you might be saying to yourself but char i don't see a mods folder i don't see this you need to run The Sims 4. Darling, if you've just downloaded The Sims 4 and you have not yet opened it, you need to open it in order for these folders to show up. Then close your game. You never install or remove mods while your game is open. You close your game and you are able to see this folder. So I'm gonna go through it again. Documents, Electronic Arts, The Sims 4 Mods. That's roughly where it should. Now, when it comes to putting in mods, you can see that I have all these folders. It really is just a matter of dragging and dropping. But what you're not going to do is take this folder and put it here. Uh-uh, honey. That's not going to work. You can see that it has a zip over it that means the mod the folder is zipped you need to open it first and the way you open it is just double clicking it and boom here's your entire mc uh, command center and these are all of the script files that you need you could just theoretically highlight all of this and drag it in to your mods folder i would not recommend doing that that's going to get really really messy what i like to do is have one folder where i keep that in so you can see that my mc command center folder is this one which i just called mcc open it and then you just boom drag all of the files in there and that becomes your mc command center the next thing you'll need is the woohoo package and the woohoo script package same thing Boom, copy it in to that folder, straight into wherever you just put your MC Command Center scripts. And that's it. The mod is downloaded. That is the same thing for things like UI extension. I have a UI extension folder 
and you can see the package and the script are in there. You always want to download both. Listen, whatever's in the folder, you put it in unless it's like a readme and a screenshot. You need the package and you need the script. It's the exact same thing for the relationship and pregnancy overhaul. Just like with MC Command Center, you are going to, I always shift click. So click the first one, then shift click to the bottom one. It will select everything and you just drag it over to whatever folder you created in your mods folder. But let's talk about organization of your mods and how you do it, why it's important and where you could go wrong. Like I mentioned, I always put my files into a folder within my mods folder. That is completely fine. But what you cannot do is put your mods into a sub folder. What does that mean? Say that I have this creator here, A. Harris Brittany, and Br A. Harris Brittany does hairs and clothes and makeup, let's just say. And I had an A. Harris Brittany folder. I could have an A. Harris Brittany folder. What I could not do is then create a folder within this folder and say that I want to have all of the hairs in one and I want to have all of the clothes in another within this A. Harris Brittany folder. Absolutely not. That is not going to work. It will not show up in your game because you are putting it within a subfolder. Mods cannot go more than one folder deep. So you can have your mods folder and then you can have a folder within that of the creator, but you cannot have another folder within that. I can't have a sneakers and accessories and hair folder within this Aretha folder. It's not going to show up in my game. It's not going to work. Always no more than one folder deep. And one folder, again, I'm emphasizing this, is just a folder within your mods. You cannot go further. You have your UI extension folder, but you do not have another folder within that folder. That's it. That's what you need to know about downloading mods. Let's talk about mod organization and why it's so important. EA does not support mods. And like I've emphasized before, when you download mods, it is at your own risk. Most of the time is safe, but do not be stupid. Don't go downloading files that you don't recognize from websites that look sketchy you always want to go to reputable creators and you want to go to places that are not going to harm your computer and are not going to harm your game again 99% of the time it's fine I'm being very cautious here and encouraging you to be mindful of this now because mods are not officially supported by EA whenever the game updates and they're changing codes around to prepare for a new pack or bring in new content that coding can also affect your mods it's usually not going to affect things like your custom content like clothes and hair but it might affect your mods and what that means is that the new code that they put into the game on the back end might make it so your mod no longer functions or certain parts of the mod are broken so when the game is updated there are a few things that you need to do number one before you update your game you're gonna take your beautiful little mods folder and you're gonna move it somewhere else or you're going to back it up because you don't want to run your game and be like, oh shit, my mods folder is broken. Then you're going to update your game and you can move your mods folder back in. Keep in mind that most of the time your mods should be fine, but you might have a mod that is broken or it's not working anymore in the way that it was before the update, in which case you're going to need to wait for the creator of that mod to update it and you're going to remove that mod in the meantime. Now, hopefully it's pretty straightforward for you in that it's really easy for you to identify which mod it is that's broken, right? Say that it is your UI. Your UI is glitching. This has like weird overlays or things are being blocked off or the whole thing is purple pretty easy for you to guess that your UI is broken or it's a specific mod that you use within a specific circumstance and that mod when you are using it no longer works that'd be great sometimes that's not the case and sometimes your sims are acting weird or doing something and you don't know why a mod uh, issue that I ran into several years ago is that my sims would not fucking sleep. There would not be music on in the room. There would be nothing on in the room and they would just constantly get up and their needs were all over the place and I couldn't figure out which mod was broken. In that case, you really only have one option. Well, you have two options and I'm going to explain them to you. Lots of people do like this mod called the better exceptions mod. When something in your game is broken or it's not working in the way that it should be working, when you run 
better exceptions within your game, it will tell you almost exactly what it is within your mods folder that is broken or conflicting with the game. That's one option, although I will be very transparent and tell you that the Better Exceptions mod uh, was pretty strenuous on my computer and I found that it didn't always work. So the other method, which I'm really here to tell you is so fucking annoying and one of the only ways that you can find out is to go through and remove half of your mods open up your game and see if the issue is still occurring. If it's not, then you know it's with the other half of your mods folder. So you put that other half back in and you see if the issue is still coming up. If it is, and you know it's within that, that's called the 50-50 method and you're gonna continuously do that. So you know what's within that half, then you're gonna go into that half and you're gonna half that until you find the mod that it is. That is extremely annoying, I hope that you never run into that issue, but that's the way that you're gonna figure it out. If a mod is broken or it's conflicting, the only solution is to remove the mod until it is updated, or if it's conflicting with another mod, to do the 50-50 method and try to figure out what's going on and which mod is not playing nice. And because mods can break, that's why it's so important for you to have your mods folder organized. Again, no more than one subfolder deep. Do not drop your .rar packages or your zipped packages or your compressed files into your mods folder because they're not open. You need to open the file first and then drag the documents within that file into your mods folder and then have your mods folder organized because if you are running better exception or a mod is broken and this was just a bunch of files that you were had all mixed up you had all your MC command center packages mixed in with all of your custom content mixed in with the packages for other mods. That's going to be really annoying for you to try to figure out and clean up your mods folder to where it needs to be. As opposed to you go in and you're playing with birth and then birth uh, glitches. I can know right away that the mod that's broken is a realistic birth mod and I can just boom and delete the the mod. If this package and all of its package files were mixed in with every piece of custom content that I had because I didn't organize my mods folder, I would delete the whole mods folder. Like that sounds incredibly stressful. So again, I want to encourage you to organize the files however it is that you want. The way that I do it is by creator. So I will have the creator and then I will have all of the content that I have for that creator within that folder just like this so I can know. The same thing is true with mods. Sometimes creators have multiple mods, as is the case with this creator. So I still have the individual mods in their own folder, but the title of that mod always starts with the name of the creator. So if I am running better exceptions and something is broken and it tells me it's a uh, Madeline, um, a pony corset, I could manually search through my mods folder if this wasn't organized for that or I could just go into the Madeline file and I would be able to see the corset right here and I could delete that file and boom, my game is fine. It's running the way it should be. So I am gonna encourage you to just keep your mods folder organized. I also have all of my skins in the same file and that's because I don't often download from the exact same creators and I like to have them here. If say you are downloading custom content, you just went on like a shopping spree for custom content or you don't have a lot of the same pieces for the same creator, what I do is create a folder and I call it misc cc and what that does it tells me that these are pieces of custom content that I have in my game but I don't have more than four pieces of custom content from the same creator that's also a great way for me to know which creators I've downloaded from before and seeing which pieces of custom content they brought out since I've last downloaded from them once they have more than like five pieces they get their own folder within my mods folder and because this is the beginner's version let me tell you where you can download download more mods. If you decide that you want to further customize your game, you want more traits, you want a dating app, you want a cooking mod, you want more jobs, you want ultrasound, where can you download mods? Number one is Curse Forge. Curse Forge is something that EA is in collaboration with and it's your official place to go and get mods. You know that every single mod on the Curse Forge 
website is completely fine, up to date, and is on an EA, which is Electronic Arts, the people who create The Sims 4, folder. So you can go straight to the Curse Forge website, you can download, it's gonna take you to this little loading screen, and then you'll be able to put that in. The second place you could get mods is Mod The Sims. So Mod The Sims is where some creators put their mods. I find that this is great for like smaller mods, uh, things that I'm just looking to maybe slightly fine tune my game, see what's up there and see if anything catches your eye. If it does, you will just go to the page. It will tell you more about it. You can do the download and same thing as before. It's gonna download as a zip. You're going to open that zip and then you're gonna move it to your mods folder. And then the other place I like to go for mods, more specifically for things like poses and cast mods, is the Sims resource. Now I have an account, so I get to just put everything in my cart, but the annoying thing about the Sims resource is that you are going to have to wait like 15 seconds for everything that you download, but you could download things like custom loading screens, presets, body presets, nose presets, poses, which you will need the Andrew Pose player for. That is where I typically go to download my mods for beginners. But because I'm not a beginner, I have several creators and modders who I know create amazing mods that I love. So I typically just go straight to their Patreon and their mods are almost always free. And if they're not free, then they're in early release and they will eventually be free. Hey besties, it's editing me realizing that I forgot to tell you one very important thing. When you download mods and you first run your game, you need to change your game set. And then you are going to go to other and this little box here, both of these, enable custom content and mods and script mods allowed need to be enabled. And then once you apply the changes, you'll have to restart your game. Once you do, you're all set. If you don't have script mods allowed or this button clicked, then your custom content and your mods are not going to show up or your script mods, which is things like UI extension, the pregnancy overhaul, that's not going to show up in your game. So make sure you have these two things checked off. And that is it. That is my beginner's guide to mods for The Sims 4. I hope that you found this video useful. I do not make these mods. I do not run these mods. I do not know anything about the coding of these mods. So if you're having an issue with any of them, please reach out to the creator of the mod and not to me because I cannot help you. With that said though, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you did find it helpful. Subscribe if you would like to and I will see you in my next video. Bye!